Hey guys, in this video today we're going to look at how we can take TCI BW and actually build a project into here and deploy it onto a platform of your choice. In this case we're going to use EKS or Kubernetes um, and then take advantage of service discovery that's built in within the actual um, design time. And to start off, um, just to make it really simple, we're actually just going to use a sample that already exists within the BWC folders when you actually install it. So if you go here to your file explorer, you'll see that under Docker, um, you can do binding, core, and palette, depending on what exactly the type of sample you want. In this case, the search discovery samples will be the one. So you just click on that, and you can just import those two zip files that actually bring up these projects that I have here. So if you notice, um, you get something exactly the same thing as I have here. And so there's a few ways to do service discovery, but if you want to do it within Kubernetes or EKS, um, then we're going to take advantage of the built-in DNS-based um, service discovery in Kubernetes. And so in order to do that, um, there's a few changes we have to make to the sample in order for, to get that to work. So the first thing or what we have to change is um, the actual HTTP client resource. So if you go to your um, client application, and if you go to resources, and you go to HTTP client resource, double-click that, It'll bring up the tab. Um, right here within this HTTP client, there's a few things going to change. The first thing is make sure that this box is unchecked. So when you when you first upload or when you first open up the sample, this will be checked. Uncheck it, and then change the default host from localhost to your service name. So um, when when you first open this up, it'll say localhost, but you just want to change this to the service name. Um, and then once you change it to the service name, then you just uh, hit save. Uh, and keep in mind what the port we use here because this is actually very important. Um, in the case if you don't change it, it'll be 8080. If you do change it, just make sure you know exactly what you've changed it to because um, later on we'll be using that. And if you don't have the right port, it's not going to work out. So once you've made these changes, then you can actually just um, create or you can just generate the air files for both of these projects. Um, it's just a matter of going to the dot application for the client and the service, package unit, overview, and just uh, exporting the your, for, your file for deployment. So I've already done this for this, so let's uh, check that out. So now that I've exported it, um, you'll see that I have two your files here. I have two um, manifest files as well, service and client that I'll be using, and I have two Docker files for them as well. So I need to gen I generated the Docker images. If you notice here, I have a client service, and then I've already tagged them for my ECR repository. So because we're using EKS, we'll be using ECR as a repository it's because it's integrated between each other very well. I don't have to worry about any type of tokens or anything, and then my, um, I already know my images are private because they're within my um, own ECR repository. Um, so once you basically, once you have the ear files, then we'll just show you one of the Docker files. Docker. And Docker file client. This is taking the base image, adding the R file, and then exposing port 8080. And so both of those would be very similar. And so once you have that, you generate the R file, just like a normal Docker image. Once you generate the Docker image, then you'll push it up into your um, ECR repository, and um, it's very standard. It's nothing, anything special you have to do with that. Um, just follow the instructions that it shows on ECR. So once you have those, then um, you'll want to create a manifest file for both of these. So I actually have the manifest files here. Um, so for your client and service, um, these are so you can create these, or if you want to, you can take the ones that were from the sample. So if I go back, notice how you have your manifest and service, and here you can have Docker file samples. You can just take these and then just change them um, in order to fit exactly what you need. And so a few things that I had to do in order to change. Um, so the first thing is you need to specify your images. So uh, you need to make sure that your Docker image is up into your repository for using ECR, for using Docker Hub, or something like that. Um, you just put exactly what the image URL is there and the name. Um, and then setting these variables. So basically, this BW profile one, you won't have to change anything because it'll already be set to Docker. But the service one, you want to change to your service um, name, essentially, the, the service app name. And so this is service discovery service app if you're using the sample. Um, if I go to the manifest service, here's service discovery service app. And why you need to change this? Well, when you're actually using service discovery, the way that the um, DNS uh, service discovery works within Kubernetes is that it looks for the actual name and then whatever port that it's sitting on. And when you actually deploy things on the Kubernetes 
um, there'll be an internal endpoint, and the internal endpoint will point to the name, not to some IP address. Um, so it's very important to make sure that you change that. If you don't change it to the name that, it, that the service is, you're going to get an error saying that the service doesn't exist. So keep that in mind. And then making sure that your port matches exactly um, what you're going to be using. So in this case, 8080. Um, if you're using the sample from the or from this manifest file um, within the actual samples folder, you'll have to change this port from 80 to 8080. So just make sure to change that for both of them. So once you made those changes, you can save it. And then it's just a matter of actually just pushing out this um, application. So if I um, go here, then you can do like kubectl um, create f. And then I had uh, manifest. Um, and the order is actually important because one will be reliant on the other. So YAML services first. This will create your replication controller and your uh, service as well. Let's give it a 30 seconds to start up. Let me just refresh here. We'll see that it's starting up, but essentially just give it a, a, a 30 seconds or so to get this pod up. So that means once we actually start the next one, then it can actually read um, exactly what it is. But um, if you notice here under services, look at this internal endpoint. It's actually pointing to the name of the actual service and then the port 8080. Like I said, it's um, that's how exactly how the DNS Kubernetes service works, where it's not looking for an IP address, it's looking for the internal endpoint name. So once we've done that, then client. And so we're going to give it a minute or so. Um, and then once it's once it's been deployed, um, we're going to try it out and make sure everything works. So now we see that um, some CP usage, some memory usage, um, that our pods, replication controllers, and services are up. So let's actually just check out the uh, service app. So if I check the uh, external endpoint um, and add Swagger to the end, I should just be able to see a basic Swagger UI um, with the basic just get project that says get hello. So my name, hello. Okay, so we know that works. Um, and so now we're, what we're actually interested in is the actual client app. So if we click this, um, if you look here, hello from Tipco, that's exactly what the project should be doing. So what it, what is, it's actually what it's doing is that it's calling upon this service application and it's saying, okay, um, basically whatever hello you're saying, in this case the default is hello from Tipco, um, we're going to call upon that, and then you can expose that as a HTTP uh, message. And if we want to look at the logs for this, so within the client, um, you see here, it says, uh, hello from Tipco, hello from Tipco, because so that's coming from the log itself. And um, you see that everything checks out, so the project actually started. If you're not seeing something like hello from Tipco, like if you're seeing it timeout, or if you're seeing some sort of error, that's probably because you didn't name the service correctly, you're not using the correct port. So that's just something to keep in mind where usually a timeout is because you didn't uh, use the correct port. And usually if it instantly fails, then it's because it can't find the correct service, which means that naming is wrong. Um, just something to keep in mind where if you're working through this example that, um, that it's very important that you make sure that you change the service name to what the actual service name is and you change the port to actually what you're using. Um, and I suggest using 8080 just because um, it's just a lot easier. Everything's already set for that. Um, but yeah, um, so as you can see, we were able to deploy um, two business version container edition projects. Um, basically, one discovered or looked for the other one um, and leveraged that. And then um, that took advantage of the built-in DNS service discovery service uh, within Kubernetes so that we didn't have to modify or add anything um, or have to worry about um, configuring anything any, um, extra. So um, I hope this is useful. And... Uh, yeah, thank you.